Today, we're having a look at the latest iteration of the HP Laptop 15. Not to be confused with the HE Pavilion 15, that's an entirely separate product lineup. So please don't think I'm confusing the two. I promise you they are different. With that said, this configuration is rocking the latest 12th gen internal. So it's got Intel's 1255U i7 processor, 16 gigabytes of speedy DDR4 RAM. We also have a one terabyte solid state drive. We also of course have Intel's latest Iris XZ graphics, Wi-Fi six and Bluetooth 5 technology on board and it's also worth noting this is a 15.6 full HD display and lastly of course it's running Windows 11. Now we're gonna see exactly what the HP Laptop 15 has improved compared to last year's model which I reviewed and I had a fair bit of critique on that one and ultimately see if this is the laptop you've been waiting for and if it's the one that's gonna deliver. Let's get started. As far as the unboxing goes this thing comes in a pretty standard looking cardboard HP box. Once you remove the content seal inside, you'll find the laptop itself in a ton of protective packaging. Remove all that and here it is looking like a standard 15 inch laptop. You also have a small 45 watt charging adapter. Unfortunately, it comes with a proprietary pin. You also get the standard wall out the charging cable and past that you have the good old instruction booklet, quick start guide and warranty information. In terms of design, the HP Laptop 15, very much like last year's model, has a full plastic or hard TPU build, if you will. However, unlike last year, it seems to be a little bit more sturdy. There's less flex overall. It's definitely more durable. Now, with that said, this thing has an approximate weight of 3.75 pounds, making it about as heavy as an average 15-inch mid-range laptop. Starting off with the top side, you have a perfect smooth plastic finish. There's no particular texture to it. For better or worse, it just feels plate. Also, you do have that shiny HP logo in the dead center. I really like the way they give that shine. Gives it a nice aesthetical look. IO port diversity on this laptop is both impressive and disappointing at the same time. So what I mean by that is on one side, you do have the proprietary DC charging port. Past that, you do have two USB-A super speed ports. On the other side, you'll find a HDMI 1.4B port. You also have a non-Thunderbolt 4 USB-C port, which is frankly disappointing. And you'll also notice you have a headphone jack and surprisingly a full-sized SD card reader, which is often not found on lower mid-range laptops like this. The bottom of the laptop is pretty standard stuff. So you have a nice long linear air intake vent for cool air to enter. And well, the rest of the bottom is pretty much a hard TP or plastic finish. Really not a whole lot to see here. As soon as you unfold this laptop, you'll notice you have a rather limited amount of palm rest space. That's simply because the keyboard comes pretty close to the edge of this laptop. Now, you'll also notice on that same note though, that there is much less flex on the actual inner chasing than there was compared to last year's model, which is a welcome improvement despite using similar materials. Now, the trackpad, while not as tall, is still very wide and actually provides a decent amount of surf real estate and it's also improved. So there's considerable less flex on the trackpad as well and the clicks also feel fairly tactile, providing a generally good experience. Unfortunately, the same cannot be said about the keyboard. So the only real good thing about this keyboard, honestly, is the fact that you have a lot of surface area for a keycap, which minimizes any chances of making typos. Past that, pretty much everything is mediocre. So the keycaps themselves feel wobbly, cheap, and finicky. And when you press on them, it's literally like you've broken something. Seriously, it just feels like this keyboard's gonna fall apart any moment. It's not an enjoyable typing experience. It sometimes feels outright uncomfortable. To make matters even worse, there is no backlighting on this keyboard, no matter which configuration you get. It's kind of shameful because most of the competitors now do offer backlighting and HP still shamelessly gets away with it. Also, you do have the inclusion of a full size 10 key number pad, which is great, but pretty common for 15 inch laptops as well. You won't notice any sort of biometric scanning on this machine. Directly above the keyboard is where you have the power button and above that, the speaker grill. Now I will do a sound test later on the video, so make sure you stay tuned for that. Above that is where you have the single mechanism hinge. While there is not a lot of wobble, which of course is a good thing, I have noticed that opening from an awkward angle or from the corner puts a lot of strain on the hinge, which can damage it over time. So make sure you open from the center and are gentle. Past that, you notice display fitting is pretty standard. So you have a relatively thick 
chin, but you do have the HP branding. On either corner, you do have very narrow bezels to make up for it. They do look pretty modern as far as 2022 standards go. And above that is where you have a average sized forehead. In the center of it all, you have a pretty mediocre 720p webcam. There is no IR scanner, so no Windows Hello capabilities, but it doesn't look as bad as you might actually think. It's decent, it's not great, but again, you know, it's more in line with the rest of the competition pretty much. Now, if you're hoping for a better display compared to last year, I've got bad news for you. It's practically the same thing. So over here, we do have a standard full HD or 1080p display with a 60 hertz refresh rate. Now this is a IPS panel, so viewing angles are actually quite impressive. Now. Past that, when we get to color accuracy, things get very depressing very fast. So you have a 45% NTSC screen rating or about 56% sRGB approximately, which basically means colors look pretty poor on here. It's not a great display for creative users or anyone who does color sensitive activities like photo editing, for example. To make matters even worse, you only have a peak brightness of 250 nits, which means that's Pretty much at this point should be illegal to have such little brightness and having a ultra reflective display does not help the case over here, which really makes it a difficult screen to look at if you're in a very well lit setting or a bright room. Performance on this machine is about what you'd kind of expect from a lower mid-range laptop. So day-to-day -day tasks like web browsing, watching videos on YouTube, for example, or even typing up a Word document are going to run as fast as they possible could. Even more demanding activities like light coding or 1080p video editing, for example, are actually a breeze for this laptop and that's 16 gigabytes of RAM really helps push that case. Now start doing really intensive activities like 4K video editing and you will start noticing a fair bit of struggle here. While you can technically do 4K video editing, adding multiple layers definitely adds a lot of lag and random frame drops. So again, it's a rather uncomfortable experience. Now thankfully, casual gaming is totally possible on this device. Games like GTA 5 will actually run at upper medium settings with a respectable 30 plus frames per second consistently. And a lot of this goes to the fantastic integration by Intel with their Intel Iris XE chipset. Thermals on this laptop are definitely one of its most graceful attributes. So under absolute unrealistic peak loads, you can hit a average surface temperature just shy of 45 degrees Celsius, which really isn't all that bad. Now under more realistic sustained heavy loads, you're gonna hover around 38 degrees Celsius. Again, not bad at all. Now, as far as fan noise goes, it doesn't get all that loud either. So you'll hit a peak noise just around 44 to 45 decibels based on our test. And that's only when you're pushing it to its limits. Otherwise, for the most part, it's pin drop silence. Battery life on this laptop is not impressive, but it's also not disappointing. On a full charge doing moderately light activities like web browsing, watching videos, using the speakers at 50% brightness, you can squeeze up to 9.5 hours on a single charge. However, with that said, if you are doing heavy activities like gaming or video editing, that quickly drops to around two to three hours, which is expected, of course. Now, in terms of speaker quality, don't really get your hopes high. This is a mid-range laptop. As such, these speakers are pretty basic on here, but still acceptable, I suppose. Have a quick listen for yourself. Everybody come here, gather round. Welcome to the freak show, the best in town. <laughs> what the hell's wrong with me? I don't get along with anybody, honestly. I've been living in my own head constantly. Thoughts jumbled around, think I need a new lobotomy. Wait, all these thoughts are too negative. I don't wanna get lost in the sedative. Gotta show them what I got, I'm competitive. You know I'm about to go off. Here's the power summary. At approximately $800 USD or about $1,100 Canadian for this configuration, the HP Laptop 15 is a decent laptop. Its build quality has definitely improved compared to its predecessors. You get a spacious trackpad. You also have what I consider to be respectable IO port diversity, even though you don't have Thunderbolt 4. Now, some things definitely holding this machine back include its lackluster display, it's not bright enough, the color accuracy is miserable, frankly, and also I don't like the fact that the performance has a lot of fluctuations. So I know it's a U-series processor, but it's an i7 U-series processor, and some tasks definitely can perform better considering you have up to 16 gigabytes of memory. The big plus side here is that this laptop runs really cool, and it has fantastic thermals for a laptop of its size and capabilities. 
Overall though, I still think the HP Laptop 15's biggest weakness by far is its lackluster keyboard. HP definitely needs to improve this. It's not an enjoyable experience whatsoever. But beyond that, I think this is a great general productivity laptop for anyone who wants a decent amount of power, okay battery life, and just a all around great jack of all trades. So if that's the kind of laptop you're looking for, definitely consider this. Otherwise, there's plenty of other options that specialize or show you know better results in specific areas. As always, if you guys enjoyed this review, make sure you hit that like button and sub to our channel. It genuinely helps us grow. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one.